Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we are doing an updated fish room tour and I'm filming on my mother's phone because I like the camera quality on it and I just discovered that you can like um, make the background gray while making me regular colored. How cool is that? Anyways, let's get into the video. Okay, so technically this is like right outside the fish room, but it still counts. So right here, we have the 55 gallon rack. And down here we have two koi that we got from Landon's Amazing Animals. The, wa the water is a little cloudy right now, but there's the first one that Patty's Petite Tanks and I picked out, and then the one in the back there, probably can't see him, but he's like orange and black, and we got him also from Landon, but my father picked him out, but this guy is by far my favorite, and then the top tank is just empty, so now we'll actually go into the fish room. Okay, so as you walk into the fish room, there's a ladder in here right now, but but right on to your right, the first tank here is a white cloud mountain minnow tank. There they are right there. I believe there's like, oh, I don't really know, but I think there's four of them in here. This is a 10 gallon tank, and there's really not much to it. Um, White clouds, as far as I know, don't really need heat, so there's not a heater in here. It's plain and simple with some fake plants, a mop, and a sponge filter. So, next tank. All right, so this is tank number two, and these are long fin zebra danios. I think, no, that's not a male. Uh, the male's the slimmer one back there. And then, um, I don't know how many there are. I feel like there's six of them in here. Five or six of them. And then the funny thing is there's actually a loose African cichlid that got in there. You just saw him. That's an orange African cichlid. You'll see some of the bigger ones later. But this is a 20 long and it's right next to the tank I just showed you. And obviously there's no heat because there's zebra danios. And like I said to the other tank, not much to them. We had these guys in our outdoor pond in the summertime, but we're in New York, so we moved them inside for the winter because it gets cold outside and the water would freeze all the way through. Uh, this year it's not as cold out in the winter time. It hasn't gotten super cold yet, and I don't know if it will, but it's gotten too cold for these guys, so obviously we would move them inside. All right, tank number three. This is a tank right below the tank I just showed you. In here, I'll just start it away, but there are some pygmy sunfish. And in here, we have some adults. I think there's 12 babies and like five adults or something. But that's a female right there. They don't move much. Like you see, here's two of them right there. They don't move much. I want to try and find a male, but it's super hard to find them in here. That might be a male, I'm not sure. But like I said, there's actually a bunch of them in here, you just can't find them. And there's also a couple um, shrimp, like the one back there. So another tank that does not have a heater. This is a 20 long, like I said. It's got a bunch of plants in there and aragonite sand. And we've had these fish for a while, um, and we're not sure if they've had babies yet because with pygmy sunfish, you don't really know if they have babies until the babies are big and they come out. Bigger. All right, so in this tank, I wish I had a better shot of the fish that are in here, but I think there's like two or three adult male, male corbenzas in here. There's a 10 gallon tank, it's got a heater, obviously, because they're corbenzas and they're cichlids. Um, there's two coconut huts, and that's where Carenzas like to hide. I'm not sure where they are. They're really good at hiding. I think there might be one in there. I'm not sure. I can't see. Oh, there's one right there. It's 
really not a good shot, but I'll try and get a photo of them and put them in the video. But they're super, super colorful cichlid when they're all colored up. There's actually two baby cabenzas that got in the discus tank, so I, you'll be able to see better uh, coloration of male cabenzas in a couple minutes. Alright, so down here, the tanks kind of turn in different colors, but that's okay. Uh, there's a ton, I mean a ton, of Kerbenzis in here. You can just see a couple of them right there. It's hard to see them, but... They're just baby Kerbenzis. If I have a picture, I'll put it in there. Put it in the video, obviously of these Kerbenzas, but for the most part, they none of them have really colored up that much. But this is a 20 long. 20 long. In this 10 gallon right here, we have a pair of Kerbenzas. I think these are Nigerian reds or something. The male looked a lot different when he was breeding. He looked like a regular Kerbenzas, but with a really, really bright red head. and. He's changed his color so much since we separated them. This is a 10 gallon, but it's got a divider, so they can't breed anymore because we're overrun with Kerbenzas as it is. But there's a good shot of the male, and the female looks similar. She's just in this cave. And she moved as soon as I put the camera over on that side. There she is. So you can see that's actually it's actually a really great spot. So right in there, you can see that she laid a ton of eggs, but obviously they're not gonna be fertilized. But she laid a ton of eggs. I'm not talking like hundreds, I'm talking like I don't know why I said a ton. But that's still a lot of eggs that are gonna be put to no use. And you can see She's kind of like making sure that water gets to them, water movement. But I think that's kind of, I think that's super cool. But yeah, this is a 10 gallon tank. And this is tank number six, I think. All right, going right down the line. There's this tank right here. Um, I don't know if there's anything in it. If there is, there might be a pregnant fish still in here. I'm not sure. That's a small little tank, but this is the 75 gallon discus tank. There's all of these discus in there, so if you want to pause the video and read them, you can. But there's a bunch of discus. We got these from Discus Hans. They're really, really pretty. I like them. Um, then also, the, that's one of the male Kerbenzas. Not supposed to be in there, but we can't catch them out because it's a 75 gallon. But that's what the male Kerbenzas look like fully colored up. Then in the back there you can see that there is, there's two Cynodontus oscillifer in here and they have damaged eyes and we got them from Dan's Fish. He's got them, um, I think they're still available, but they're really nice and they're healthy. Even though their eyes got damaged in shipping. To his warehouse but this is a 75 gallon tank and you'll see that all of our tanks have these shop lights that we got from Home Depot all of them are run off of them because you can attach so many to each other and I think all six of those lights are run off of one outlet so that's super cool all right so this is going to be eight tanks right here these are water bridge tanks, and basically, there's a canister filter. The um, intake is on that end tank, and it goes to the filter, filters through, and then comes back and pumps into this tank. And then these uh, one inch PVC pumps the water, siphons the water through each tank. So, that's super cool. Looks like that lid got. Not broke, but just got pushed in. I don't think there's anything in this tank because we sold the rice fish in here, I believe. But in this tank here, these are 
mine, but not mine. Um, these are cherry perps, and we actually bred these. I was like, well, I really wanted to breed cherry perps. Not like, like I really want to breed them, but like, I found it as a cool breeding opportunity. And there's algae on the front glass, so it's not focusing on them. But I found it as a breeding opportunity, and it wasn't that hard at all. Just babies started popping up in the tank. So, this is, I think there's like 14 of them or so, and I'm sure someone would count them. And if you do count them, then leave a comment down below. But, I think there's like 14 in here or something. So, next tank. Again, I think this next tank doesn't have anything in it, but I wanted to show it just so you know that I showed all the tanks. And the next tank here has some tequila sunrise guppies. I think there's like one male in here. So he's got a 10 gallon tank to himself and there's so much salvinia at the top. But in the back there, there's a tequila sunrise guppy. This next tank, nothing. This 10 gallon tank, however, if I can find him, well, if the camera, will, it's more like, will the camera focus on them? There he is, right there. So those are honey grommy babies that we got from a neighbor of ours. Not necessarily a neighbor, she lives like a minute down the street or something. And she's bred her honey grommies three times, but she can't keep the fry alive. So the second time she bred them, she gave them to us, and they're doing fantastic. I don't know how many there are in there. They hide in the Salvinia and whatnot. But there's a lot of them in there. In here, I think there's just some baby fish that got sucked from the other tank. And in here, there are some baby fish as well. I just saw one. Where'd he go? There he is. But the camera's not focusing. Anyways, there's a fish back there that has gotten pretty big. Actually, that's some really good size. I, that's a threadfin rainbow baby that's just been in here. So, that's cool. I never really realized that he got that big, but he is that big. It could be a she. I don't know. And obviously, like I said, there's a bunch of honey grommy babies that just get sucked from tank to tank, but they seem to not get sucked up in the intake, so that's good. And now to the 75. So right above these 10 gallon tanks is a 75 gallon. There's like five bloodfin tetras, a um, couple male cherry barbs, and then some angelfish. Uh, now, the angelfish is actually paired off. So we have two babies that we saved from their spawn. And you'll see those if I can get them on camera. You'll see those soon. But I think there's five of them and we got them from Peplin Creek Aquatics. I believe, and threadfin rainbows and the cherry barbs obviously got from our LFS, and the bloodfin tetras we just rescued. Um, and there's also, I probably can't find them, but there's also a hill stream launch and a clown pleco in here. And I don't know what these two are doing back here, but I feel like that might be the male and female. All right, so the next tank right here is an axolotl tank. There's one right there. That is a wild axolotl. There's also a Lucy axolotl in here. I'm gonna have the hardest time finding her because she hides so well, but she is in here. So I'll try and get a photo of her and put her in there. And then there's all of these worm cultures. Some of these I brought to the fish 
swap that we went to recently, like you can see here, it's gotten a lot dirtier. Not dirtier, just like as more worms grow in here, the lid has gotten dirtier. So I have to clean up this culture, but you can see I had some ready to feed cultures at the fish swap. Alright, so the next tank. Next tank is a small little shrimp tank. Red Rillies, you can see one on the thing there. The bunch of babies down here. And what we did with these, we bought a bunch of pregnant red really shrimp and put them in this tank and let them have birth. So this next tank is a 10 gallon bow front. It's pretty tall, honestly. And my mother spawned some black marble angelfish in here. And I'm trying to find some of the babies. I know there's two of them in here. Just can't find them. But there's a white one and a black one. So back here, there's one, he just left. You can like barely see his reflection. There he is. So there's the white one, there's basically a black one that's exactly like that, but all black. All right, so now on to the husky rack. These are two husky racks combined. And this first tank here has some German ribbon, German ribbon fin guppies. And then some red shrimp. And we got these red shrimp. I had like two of them. And then they bred and made like hundreds of them. Then we sold a bunch of them. And then I got some really nice ones to make some really nice baby shrimp and there they are there's one up there but it's really hard to see them they're like all over this tank anyways this tank here some July Corys there's one stir by Cory in here because that's what our LFS gave my mother there's the stir by it's right there but then there's a bunch of Julies, or I think they might be Trilineas or something. But there they are. I think there's five of them, and then one stir by. And there's four larger ones and one smaller of the Julies. And then over here, a pair of killifish. I don't know what kind of killifish, but killifish. And then there's these large plecos. I don't know where we got these from. But I know that Stephen P has some, if you need some long fin there and I showed you a short fin just a second ago and then there's another short fin back there. They're really nice honestly. This is a 40 breeder down here. This is another wild axolotl of my mother's. We got this from a lady near us and she literally just opened a fish store like less than a week ago. She's also got some husky babies for sale. But that's one of the axolotls. And the other one. I don't know. I have to look like really hard. Try and find them. There's one in that house there. I don't know how he squeezed himself in there, but he always sits in there. Then there's one behind this log here that you're not going to be able to see, but they have this little fan, so. Then this is another 40 breeder, a bunch of OB peacock babies that are growing out. There's one in here that I really like, I don't see him this second, but he's got like orange rims on his fins and he's so cool. But there used to be like 80 of them in here, and we sold so many of the fish swap and online. So now there's less, which is always nice. Down here, there's some Dalmatian mollies. There's tons of them. We actually have two 10 gallon grots of just these. The parents are super big, they're in the back there. 
And these are some of the larger babies. And then there's newborn babies. Then here are some red sword tails, along with some super red plecos that I got from the fish swap that we went to. I think there's five super reds, maybe? And then five or six of the sword tails that are babies from the bigger ones that we have. So this guppy tank right here, there's so many pond snails or bladder snails that they climb out of the tank and they go up there. And all of these are just little egg sacs of these pond snails. But anyway, these are some snake skin guppies. There's one right there, lots of male. There's another male right there, and then male. There's females too, obviously. There's an assortment. There's actually a lot of males in here right now, so we had to take out, out a bunch recently. So, that's a 20 high along with the two that I just showed you. So this 20 long right here is pretty dirty right now, so I can't really get a good view. But here are some albino cabrenzas that have babies. That's the um, female that you see. And all those babies, there's some that are full albino, but a lot of them are actually regulars. And she's mad at me right now, so I'm not going to look at this tank anymore. And then... The male's in there somewhere. I can't find him right now. Next tank here is an Ember Tetra and Albino Pleco tank. So, if you've seen other videos of mine, you'll see that we bred these Ember Tetras without even trying. There's two babies that just popped up. And recently, we found that that's the female and the males over there. But we found that these albino bristlenose, long fin albino bristlenose babies, well, plecos had babies. Um, the male, we got a male and female from Peplin Creek Aquatics, but the female had died, so we got a female, or what we thought a female, from Steven, from Steven P2003. And it stayed a female. And they recently just popped up with babies. So they're in this breeder box right now. They poop a lot because they're plecos. Take an under view of that. Wow. But I think that's some zucchini, right? I'm too short to even see that. But there's like 34 babies in this breeder box. Fluval hay on the side. One of the bigger ones, they're not the small ones. And they're really cool, I like them. And they're going to move to a 25 gallon when they get a little bit bigger. So in this 10 gallon tank right next to the Pleco tank that I showed you, there's some blue Moscow guppies, and then some orange shrimp that I got from Small World Aquatics. Um, uh, can't find one. There's one right there. I don't know how well you'll be able to see that. But, not much to this tank. There's a tank that, these were actually really, really small babies that I got from Jess. And I had a main tank of them, but that tank broke out with this illness and like all of them died, which was really, really sad because I really liked them. But I had this spare tank of babies and they had a bunch of babies that were in this tank. But they turn into these adults and then they start having babies. So now I have my little colony back, I guess you call it, and that's a 10 gallon. I don't want to skip any tanks, but this tank's also empty. We sold a bunch of Carenzas and got this tank freed open. Hopefully, I'm looking into getting a tenor saxophone right now, so I'm not going to get more Corridoras right now, but I'm thinking next spring or summer, I'm gonna get some Corridor Equis or Con Color for that tank which I'm super excited about. It'll probably be Equis, because Equis are super hard to find, and when you do find them, they're expensive, but I know a guy that has them for like 20 bucks, which I think is a really good price, and he's got adults for like a little bit more, I think like 35 bucks, which is why I want to get some adults and try and spawn them, because if I can spawn them, 
I'll be like the sixth person reported in the world that has ever brought that has ever bred them. So I think that'd be pretty cool. But um, later on in this video, you'll see that I have a couple species in my corridors down here, and then in my room I have like three, I think three species right now until I get more. So I didn't want to skip out on a tank, but this 20 high is empty for now. This 20 high, however, is a newer system, I guess you could say. It's been running for a while. It had African cichlids growing out in it, but my mother cleaned it. She took the rocks out and she put sand in there for these guys right here. These are chameleon whiptails. I'll put their like correct name, I guess. Uh, on the screen here, but chameleon whiptails, they're actually a pair of them. She got them for a really good price. They used to be like 120 bucks each, but they're on sale for like a pair for like a hundred or something. I can't remember. And then there's also a bunch of her daisy blue rice fish babies. Um, so we had this group of like six or five from Peplin Creek, and they make tons of babies. And these aren't even half the babies that they made. Uh, we've gotten rid of so many. We brought some pears to the fish swap, and I don't think we brought home any of them because they went so well. It's kind of hard to show this tank because I'm like working around a ladder. But this tank's a little green right now, but that's okay. There's a bunch, as you can see, uh, orange African cichlids. I was trying to be a little bit sneaky about it because they're so they're so like scared of people. But there they are. A bunch of orange ones. There's some blue ones in there too. But like I said, the water screen so you can't really see. Alright, this is one of my favorite tanks. Honestly. At the top here, we have platinum rice fish. Um, that's a female. She's got some eggs on her right now. They lay eggs so often. I just can't get any of them to hatch. So I've been trying different things. And actually that little baby just like survived so I want to put in a bunch of plants and then get them to spawn and they won't be able to eat their babies because there's like so many plants and then hopefully I can get more fry out of them because normally I just pull the eggs which I'm gonna try and continue to do because I don't know if they're getting fertilized or not then I have a really big snail back there that I got from Disco Fish. She has a Get Gal store. Then here I have some Corridora Schultz Eye, aka Black Venezuelan Corridoras. Here's some, I was going to say here's some information, but it's really just their lineage and their scientific name. That's what I had planned on feeding them, but there's not a whole lot of variation here. So I feed them uh, blood worms, black worms, white worms, wafers, like uh, sinking wafers. I can also feed them Dr. Basilier, they eat pellets, and there's something else I'm forgetting, but that's okay. So I believe there's two females and four males, if I'm not mistaken. They're all the same age, but the two, I think those two are females because they're like really, they get really fat when you feed them and they're significantly bigger than the four other ones. But these ones are super nice quality because you can barely even see their eyes. Like you can barely even see any markings on them except for their fins. And their fins are like a reddish color and their bodies are super, super dark black. And I really, really like them and I think they do so nicely with these rice fish. Just, I wish I could soften up the water a little bit. I don't know if I'm gonna have to separate the Schultz eye from the rice fish because the rice fish are in harder water. And most of you might know that Cordor is like softer water. So I might end up transferring the Cordoras or maybe the, the rice fish out of the tank so then they can breed separately and I can have either one of the species in here instead of, you know, giving the Cordoras anything less than their perfect uh, breeding conditions. In here, I have to be super careful because these guys are super, super shy. 
but you can see that guy right there. He's long thin. These are some peppered corridor babies. And I think almost all of them are going to be long thin because I have one peppered Cory that we rescued and she's short fin and like I just said she's a she and I got five from Dan's fish and they all came out long fin which I'm perfectly happy with so one of them's a female and four of them are male I think am I saying that yeah um, so I have four males two females but there's only one short fin, so I think all of these are going to come out long fin for the most part. Because I think that's like the dominant gene. But there's 12 babies in here. And I try and do water changes as often as I can. This tank looks pretty big on camera, but it's a 20 gallon like the other one. And you can see that there's a lot of substrate, which is a lot more than I normally put. You could see the amount of substrate in this tank compared to my peppered cori tank right there. Like that barely even covers the bottom. If I move like one speck of sand, like you could see the bottom of the tank. Like I do not put a lot of sand in my cori tanks at all. And I don't know if I put more then they would hold more beneficial bacteria, but I like to put as little as possible because um, I like to feed a lot of live foods, especially black worms, and they burrow in the substrate, and I don't want them to like get lost and then they'll never find them. But this was uh, once held a daisy blue rice fish, I mean not daisy blue rice fish, um, long fin zebra danios, and they had purple rocks. So then my mother put some black sand on it, but then I decided I want white sand because the babies, I feel like they'd show up a little bit better, which they didn't, but I wanted white sand. So now there's like a good three inches or so, but there's 12 um, peppered cori babies in there. And then over here are the adults. And uh, this doesn't go just for these cori cats that I'm showing. But this just goes for the video in general. I think the last fish room tour video, I was using my tripod and my webcam, and it wasn't really, not necessarily showing up that well, but just like, I would just point the, uh, the camera at the tank like this, just be like, here's this fish and the next tank. So I think this video is more like, so this fish is in this tank and then like talking about them more, which I like better. Um, but I think that's one of the females right there. Then the other female is right there. Then the other ones are long fin males. So this is pr plain and simple. There's one corridor egg up there because they just recently spawned and I accidentally crushed the eggs when I was taking them off. But I, got, I saved one so hopefully it hatches. And um, yeah, so maybe I'll do an update on that. So in this tank right here, there's a bunch of guppies. These are guppy babies, growing them out. And there's some metalhead guppies and there's some dragon guppies. Dragons. That's a dragon male. And that's, uh, that's like a half black pastel almost. But this tank doesn't get a whole lot of light and it's pretty simple. I keep a lot of my tanks simple, like that's not my tank, and I like that it has a bunch of decoration, but like you look at this and it's just sponge filter, heater, mop, fish, which eventually I want to get like a ton of moss like in there, and just like have a ton of moss in all of my tanks. I got a bunch of subwasser tank from Stephen P. 2003. And I love it, and I would love to get more, because I think that the subwasser tank works out really nice for the cory cats. It does get frustrating at some times, because sometimes the cory cats will spawn in the subwasser tank, and I just don't pull the subwasser tank, so then I just don't get those eggs. But I think if I was like keeping a good eye on the tank, then I think a bunch of subwasser tank would work. This tank right here... 
It's got two male Epistos because they were a pair. Well, they were. They told me that it was a pair, but it's two males. Then there's also one orange Venezuelan Cory back there. So I have ten of the orange Venezuelans upstairs. And before I got those ten for my birthday, I had four of them from my LFS. But three of them died, so I just have one straggler. And I don't want to put him with any of my other corridors, just in case he's not 100% healthy. So I'm keeping him in here until, like, he gets some good size on him. Then to finish off the fish room tour, we have Vienna guppies. I got these from Liquid Zoo, Matt. And there are a ton of babies in here. There's a ton of babies. I originally took the females into a breeder box to give birth, but now I just don't because I put plants in there. And I think the plants help. But like I said, there's a ton of babies. There's some mollies in here. And then there's the Vienna guppies, which are actually a pretty holy grail, if you will. Yeah. And last but not least, we have the new rack in the middle of the fish room. The last fish room tour that I did, I didn't show, well, I did show this, but it was completely empty. We didn't even have all the tanks in here. But I'm gonna go to the other side because the names of the fish are there. So these are some blue velvet shrimp, and each one of these shrimp tanks has a pair of guppies. So these are blue velvet shrimp. Green jades, which I don't know if I'll be able to find because there's not that many. There's one on that moss ball right there. Blue diamonds. We got these from Danny Weshi. There's a bunch of babies. There they are. Uh, black diamond chocolate. I don't know where to find these, but they look really nice. There's some that have all white bodies and like blue heads, which I think is really cool. There's one in that log. I don't know if you'll be able to see them. Orange reallys. And like I've been saying, there's not a whole lot of numbers on these shrimp right now. So it's hard to get like a good group of them together. But I'm trying to show them my best. Crystal red shrimp. We got a lot of these from Joe's Shrimp Shack. Well, I think we got a couple of them from Joe's Shrimp Shack and then a couple of them from Detroit Shrimp, which is also known as Motor City Aquatics now. These are black crystal shrimp. And then in this, in this last tank, I'll have to really look to get a good shot of a nice one. But there's some yellow shrimp in here. A lot of them are at the top there. It's really hard to get a shot through the algae, like I said. But a lot of them are at the top on that little banana stem. And then there's also panda guppies in this one. The other ones are just pairs of snakeskin guppies. In this tank, uh, um, I think there are... I don't know. I think there might be African cichlids. I'm not sure. Dalmatian mollies. Dalmatian mollies. Some bumblebee gobies. There's one on the back there. There's another one. There's like six of them. This is the only tank in the fish room. Or in the house for that matter. Any tank. This is the only tank that has water in it. And a filter. But does not have fish. And then here are some African cichlids, orange African cichlids, and then a copper axolotl. I love him. I think that's Mickey. But anyways, that's that for the rest. Alright, I hope you all enjoyed that video. And I hope that this fish room tour was a lot more in-depth than the last one. And I hope you all look forward to the next monthly fish room tour because we agreed that I would do one fish room tour every month uh, as one of my weekly videos which I upload on Thursdays. I try to give them out by 5 p.m. 
Eastern Time or so. But you'll just have to turn the notifications on so then you know. But that's all the updates for the fish room. We've gotten a lot of new fish. A lot of new, new fish. And that doesn't happen very often, so the next fish room tour we might only have a couple new babies and maybe another species of fish, you never know. But we're not going to have that many more new species because it's coming winter time and people are stopping, stop, are going to stop shipping. Um, not necessarily everybody, but a good portion of people. And also, Christmas is right around the corner, so people aren't going to be shipping for the next couple weeks. But we did go to a fish swap and we are preparing for a fish swap which are specifically looking for shrimp, like all those tanks, and betas, which we will be trying to breed I think like today or tomorrow. We already have them in their tank, they just have to build a nice bubble nest and then make babies, which everybody loves. So I hope you all enjoyed this video and have a great day. Bye!